everybody welcome back to another video today something i think can help a lot of you guys we're going to talk all about creating these interactive animated mixtape covers visualizers basically how to use after effects to take any image you have and make it come to life in this sort of interactive way where it looks like it's this sort of looping video so it's going to be pretty simple we're going to be isolating talking about cameras talking about shakes and giving some different looks i do want to say quickly um late february it's actually been a really good month for music videos in terms of a lot of new things coming out I want to talk about. So we have videos planned for this little Dirk video, um, this Jack Harlow effect. We got this Denzel Curry awesome Kill Bill style music video I want to talk about as well as this Kodak Black video. So stay tuned if you guys want to see more. Slap that subscribe button. Drop a like if you do enjoy. It helps me a huge amount with the YouTube algorithm. And as always, if there's anything that you would like to see, comment it down below. This exact example was actually pulled from a comment. So shout out to you guys for helping me build up this channel and community. Let's get started here. I've already sourced a bunch of these images that I'm going to start messing around with. And um, let's go ahead and hop into After Effects to start piecing together something similar to that album cover. So I'm actually going to drag some of these into Premiere. You can start in Premiere with a dynamic link or just drop it right into After Effects. I'm gonna go ahead and just right click on this clip and click replace with After Effects composition to get started. And let's again pull up the example so we can break it down a little bit better. You see how they've masked certain areas and they've added some motion just to make it seem a little bit more alive. So step number one, we always want to isolate our subject from our background here if there is a background. Now one little tip here, if you do have Adobe Photoshop, if you prefer doing some um, touches or doing masking in Photoshop, you can open these up, do everything there, save that Photoshop file and just drag it straight into After Effects as a layer. That's completely optional. But if you are doing it in After Effects, let's go ahead and select that clip. We're just going to grab our pen tool in the top left also click G to shortcut select that and we're just going to start clicking a little bit of an outline here around our subject and and gaps like this will take out afterwards let's just try and get a nice rough cut here some useful things to keep in mind while doing this if you click and hold you can move your mouse and bend the joint like this so make sure you're using that so that you don't get a choppy outline and don't worry if it isn't perfect it doesn't have to be perfect you can clean it up with a few simple steps after the fact all right, so I connected my mask and you can see our background has now disappeared. So if you select your layer, let's talk a little bit about our mask options. And I'm actually going to just hide the mask so you can see these edges that I'm talking about. So if we click M or we open up where it says mask here, you have some options like feather. If you bump that up, it's going to just soften these edges. And as you can see, if I bump it like crazy, it's gonna be more of this soft kind of gradient. If you want just a tiny bit of softness, maybe go up to like, three, four. So I'm going to select the layer again and just start drawing a second little mask for this inner area. And you see how this hasn't disappeared. You want to change your mask from add to subtract. And again, we can do a tiny bit of mask expansion just to clear out some of those edges that are bleeding through. That looks fine. So we're a little bit cut off here. So I'm just going to move this to the far left side and then maybe click S and just scale up a tiny bit. So we've isolated our scene here. If I toggle this on and off, you can see we have a transparent background that we can start layering different things to build out this animated composition. In terms of adding the animation, one of the most important parts, let's go ahead and talk about some things you can do there. If we right click in this gray space in After Effects and we go to new, and we go to camera, you can set up your own personal little camera here where you can animate controls, you can zoom in, etc. So let's just click OK. To be able to actually use this camera properly, we need to make sure this layer is a 3D layer. So wherever it says toggle switches and modes down here, make sure you're checking that on until you're seeing these little, until you're seeing this 3D cube switch. This is the 3D layer switch. You can go ahead and check that on for our layer. Now we can use our camera to fully move around this scene in 3D space. So sounds confusing, but it's really not that hard. You just need to click C on your keyboard to toggle through the different camera controls. So if I click C, you're gonna see how my cursor is changing and toggling through here. You have this full 3D camera rotation. Control Z to undo that. Panning and click C, you have your zooming. So with those controls, we can easily set up a tiny bit of keyframes just to animate, move in and out, whatever. So for example, if I open up the little camera options here and then I open up transform. You want to make sure you're starting at the beginning here. You want to click and drag down just to activate a keyframe for all of those transform positions. 
Next, you wanna drag a little bit on the timeline for however long you want this motion to last. Let's go like two seconds. And then I'll click C, and then we'll just do a simple zoom and maybe pan over. So what you're gonna get is if I press play, you have this simple little zoom in. All right, so now that you know how to create that custom camera for any keyframed movement, let's go ahead and just hide the visibility of the camera for now. We'll come back to that a little bit later when we're adding our finishing touches. And let's just add a tiny bit of camera shake just to make this feel a bit more alive. So you see in the original example here, there's this sort of swaying that's going on so that it's not so static. To set that up, we're going to click on our original footage and we're gonna click P for position. We're going to go ahead and just hold down alt on our keyboard and click on the stopwatch. So it's going to pop up this expression editor. And what we can do is just type the code wiggle. So what it's going to do here is ask for some parameters. So we can set up some custom sliders just to be able to control this a lot easier. And to do that, you go to effect expression controls and then slider control. So let's duplicate that so we can go to effect and slider control again. And we'll rename this one to frequency and we'll rename this one to amount so what you can do is easily just click into this wiggle expression grab this little pick whip tool that's right here and connect that to our frequency slider in the effect controls so wherever this box pops up just plop that there and you'll see it automatically writes it in we can click comma and then grab the pick whip and connect to our mount so once you've linked those two up just add in another parenthesis to end it there so that it'll work properly and then if we click off and change any of these slider values and then click play see how we have this slight sort of camera shake going on if you want it a lot more subtle you can just take your slider put it down to something lower and you can see how we now have this sort of sway going on very subtle, but you can see if I zoom in here. So an easy way to add that in, and you don't have to do it on specific elements. Say, for example, you don't want things wiggling in different directions. You could always just alt click to undo that position. Control X to delete those. Let's actually just drag in another image here to show you as a background. Drag it below this layer. And then we'll go ahead and select all those, right click and pre-compose them. So we'll name this finished comp. And then what we can do is that same little trick where we Control V into the effect controls, click P and I'll click the position. And then we add in our wiggle parenthesis, connect, comma, connect, and then end the parenthesis and click enter. So now when we press play, the entire composition will have that slight sort of movement going on. You can use the slider to control how fast it's moving. Mix that in with our camera. So again, right click, new camera we can add any zooms to this main comp like we showed you earlier to make sure that this is a 3d layer you can even add a little bit of rotation all right so now that you know how to control the composition how to add that subtle movement just to make it a little bit less static but to add your camera for more complete control over the way that things are transforming let's go ahead and add a tiny bit of movement just to some of these specific elements so for example, the hand. All right guys, so now we're gonna talk about one of the most important tools that you can use when setting up these animated visualizers and adding some more dynamic movement to make pictures really come alive. So if I just scroll through back in here, you can see this subtle little movement where we're really able to control every aspect of the scene. We're gonna be able to do that by using the puppet tool. So let me go and undo everything I've done here just so I can show you the exact steps to start putting this together. So step number one, make sure that you are inside the composition, not in your master comp with all the movement. You want to double click into the comp with your individual elements. Step number two, let's decide what we want to isolate. So in this case, we're going to make the hand swivel at a different pace and then we'll add some subtle movement to Polo G himself. So let's select this layer here and we're gonna click Control D to duplicate it. Let's right click on this duplication and rename this to hand. So on this hand layer, what we're gonna do first is right click on it and pre-compose it. And we're gonna click move all attributes into the new composition. That way, whenever we make these adjustments, it won't be, we won't have to worry about all the masking that we did earlier to isolate this from the background. Let's also do the same to the original layer. So right click, pre-compose, move all attributes into new composition. Now you'll see when we click M, you don't see any of those masks popping up, and this is just fully isolated without any issue. So on the hand composition here, we're gonna go ahead and set up another mask. So we'll click G, 
And this time we're just going to mask around the hand. So what we've done here, if I just hide these layers, we'll hide the background first, then we'll hide this main subject layer second. And you can see we have that hand isolated. Now the only issue here, if I was to grab this hand layer and um, just click V and move it around, you'll see there's still a hand underneath there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the mask that we just made around the hands. If you're not seeing that, just click M to show that. I'm gonna select it and click Control C to copy the mask. And then I'm gonna click the bottom layer and click Control V to paste the hand mask. Now, if we open up the mask down here, this is defaulted to add. Let's switch that to subtract. So now what we've done is we've fully isolated the hand from the background. So if I click off the background then the subject layer, then the hand, and if I grab the hand and move it, you can see there's just a little gap. And we can compensate for that just by covering it up, scaling. So let's go ahead and do that now. First, let's add in our hand movement. Again, for that, we're gonna use the puppet tool. Before we do that, again, if there's any mask here, you can run into some issues. So it's always safe after you've done the masking and before the puppet tool, just to, again, pre-compose it once more. So we'll pre-compose, move all attributes into the new composition, so that's locked in. Do the same with this bottom one, pre-compose, move all into the new composition. So on the hand comp, go up in the top left and grab your puppet tool. We're just going to click and add some simple little pins here. Next, what we're gonna do is just drag, so I'll go like six seconds. Then if you make any adjustment to the hand, you can see how we've now added that movement. And my best recommendation, try and make it look as natural as possible. That means maybe adding less puppet points. So let's try that one more time and just do like two, drag six, and then we'll just sort of move it like this. So that looks a bit more natural because we're not bending and stretching each of the fingers. If you want to, you can go in, but again, my best recommendation is just to keep it simple. So now our only issue is whenever we move the hand, you can see the subtracted gap that we set up earlier. So to compensate for that, we can click S, we can scale up the hand a bit and just click V and just kind of position it more forward to sort of cover things up. And we could always add some movement onto the subject background here. So we could add some puppet tool onto here. Again, make sure you're clicking M and there's no mask. If there is a mask, you always want to pre-compose it. But we can grab our puppet tool, and just add a couple little simple adjustments like this. So we'll go six seconds, a little bit of a head tilt. There you go, just covering up some of those edges. You're able to make some easy movements. And remember, since these are two different isolated parts, the hand and the hand and the subject, feel free to change up the timing of any of these movements. We'll open up effects and puppet, open up the form and all of these keyframes. And let's try and just space those out or maybe even make them faster. And you can see how we're able to control each of those different parts. So as you can see, we have this slow sort of animated movement onto our image. We're able to control different parts by isolating using that masking. And we're able to use that puppet tool to add really any motion we want. And you can use this in so many different ways, not just on people waving their hands. We set up our main comp earlier with all of the shakes and the camera. So whenever we go back and play that, you can see we have that puppet motion with all of the camera shake and the subtle movement. So I think it's pretty cool. Again, keep the puppet tool simple so that you don't have things distorting too much, but it's a great, great tool to be able to add movement into your images. So we've got the movement pretty much down. Let's talk about finalizing the look with some of the things that they did in this video we can see the background has a tiny bit of dynamic it blurs at some points we'll add a little bit of a blink and we'll add a different color grade and texture so if you look closely you can see this is sort of like a dusty uh, cross hatching texture you could always just use google images if you really need to you can go to tools search by usage rights, search by different size to get high quality stuff and find something that fits the look that you're trying to go for. Maybe something like this. I'll just go ahead and save this image, drag that directly into After Effects. So let's click S and just play with the scaling here. And then all you wanna do is click toggle switches and modes and change around the blending mode to get these different um, mixtures of the texture with your, with your background. You can always click T, lower the opacity if you really want to. You wanna make sure that you check on the 3D layer for that texture. Behind, so we'll just do that, so that the texture will move with the camera. And then for the background here, how you have this sort of animated texture, what you can do to create that is use the colorama effect. So we'll look up colorama. We only wanna place that on the background. So again, let's pop into our comp here to change around the individual elements. 
put Colorama on our background layer. The cool thing about this effect is you have all of these built-in little presets. So if we open up Output Cycle and our effect controls, I think the one that they used was maybe like clay. You guys can change this around and really just create whatever. You can do a phase shift so it's uh, affecting different parts. And you can keyframe this little cycle phase shift too. So we'll just we'll click to keyframe our phase shift, move like six seconds, and we'll just do a tiny bit of adjustment here. You can see how our background is gradually changing with the cycled repetition. And then we can even just copy this colorama effect and paste it onto the hand layer to paste the exact same look. It really makes it look like some of those vintage uh, retro t-shirts come to life with different unique colors and animations. You can always add a little blur to the background. So we'll just look up a camera lens blur. You can keyframe that. If you guys like the colorama effect, I've actually got a full effect preset pack on my website for After Effects all using Colorama and adding some really cool looks. So let me just hide the custom Colorama that we set up. Again, link in my description if you guys are interested in that. We have these decay presets, things like Demon Face, Glitch, De Glitch Decay, Midnight Vampire, Pulsing RGB Rage. These are all animated um, drag and drop presets that you can drop on here, that you can drop on and get, get some instant animated looks. I'll put that on third quality just so I can play this back a little bit easier for you guys, start showing you a little bit of what you can do. And I really love how a lot of these look. I think they're great uh, for a lot of these backgrounds. And some of them only affect certain areas like Demon Face. I think that one looks pretty sick. So that could be some cool stuff that you can add in, some easy animated looks which are similar to what's going on in the original and you can just drag and drop those to any parts of your background or whatever layer. So check that out if you guys are interested. Because we set up that dynamic link at the beginning in Premiere, I can just pop into Premiere and see all of my uh, adjustments that we made in After Effects. And go ahead and just alt drag this over to loop it back and forth, B duration reverse. And we could just put that for the duration of a song if you guys are using that for some sort of visual. And you can do any other color adjustments straight from Premiere at any LUTs if you want to hone in that look. So I hope you guys do enjoy. I think this I think this is something that can really help people. Again, just taking your work to the next level, adding adding new things that can put some more money in your pocket or again just add some more quality to your work by utilizing After Effects. So if you guys did enjoy, slap a like on the video. It means a huge amount to me. Again, comment below what you'd like to see next. I'm going to be recording a lot of tutorials for those videos I mentioned at the beginning. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. And I'll see you in the next video.